In this example, we are looking for an equation of a line that passes through a given point, and that given point is 3, 2, and that uh, line needs to be parallel to the tangent line to the function f of x equals 1 over x at x equals negative 1. Now, at this point, since we don't have any shortcut rules for derivatives, we must utilize the limit definition of the derivative to actually get this slope that we need. Um, but know that it's, I mean, it's really important to know that once we do have shortcut rules, it's not the actual process of using the limit definition that's required for these line problems, um, but rather it's the fact that we need the derivative. And so once we get other tools to get derivatives more quickly, we can utilize those tools. But right now, all we have is this limit definition of the derivative that's going to be required. Another key word here that I want to make sure we point out here is parallel. So we're not actually looking for the equation of the tangent line. We're looking for an equation of a line that goes through a point um, that's just given there. But the key here is um, though we're given a point, we need to find the slope of the tangent line because a parallel line to that tangent line would have the same slope. Parallel means same slope there. And so here what we have for, um, for this problem, I would uh, write out as our starting place this uh, point slope form of the line, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And see, for the point slope form of the line, we need a point and we need a slope. So the point's given. That point given is 3, 2. And so it's the slope that we have to work for. The slope is going to be, um, the slope of that line is going to be to a parallel line, which will mean same slope as the tangent line. So this slope that we're going to be finding is going to be our derivative with our input value as x equals negative 1 that's given there in the problem. So we need to be able to utilize the limit definition of the derivative to compute f prime of negative 1. And what I'd like to do is show you that um, even though we have a single specified x value that we're um, looking for, we don't have to uh, set the problem up, the limit definition up, where that particular x value is um, coming into play. We could just first look for f prime of x, and then we can utilize that function to plug in the negative 1. So um, that would be useful if perhaps we need multiple values for f prime given at different x values. Um, we can just find the, use the limit definition once to find f prime of x, and then we can just use algebra to plug in whatever x values you want and not have to restart the problem. So that's one thing to keep in mind here with these things too. So f prime of x, um, I'm just going to choose the uh, h going to 0 limit because um, that's the one that I typically prefer to deal with. Uh, I usually prefer that one because it's easier to see when there's a common factor of h on the top that cancels with that h on the bottom. And so that's the one that I usually tackle. So the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h is what we're looking for here. So the function is 1 over x. So the denominator is what's getting replaced by whatever's in the um, parentheses. So we've got the limit as h goes to 0. And so our template for this function is just this 1 over blank. So the blank gets replaced with what's in parentheses. So for the first one, it would be x plus h. And then for the second one, it's just 1 over x because that's what f of x is. All over h. So now uh, we see that we have fractions within fractions, and there's a couple of different ways we can tackle this. We could just clean up the top by combining those two fractions, getting a common denominator, um, and then subtracting them. Um, or the other thing that I often like to uh, do to show my students is we could um, simply take the two denominators that we have, so the denominators are the x plus h, the little denominators, and x. And if we were to take the product of those things, so x plus h times x, and we multiply both the top and the bottom by that, then what happens is in the bottom we just keep 
um, it all factored out because remember that H in the bottom needs to go away. So we're going to leave that H um, factored there. And then we're just going to tack on to it um, this kind of necessary balancing thing because we need the X plus H here times the X that's on the top. And we're going to take that and we're going to distribute it across the subtraction sign. So when we distribute that across the subtraction sign, we're taking that... Um, the pair of factors, the x plus h times the x, and it basically lands in the top of each one of these. Okay. But see, since I was very um, purposeful about what it was I was multiplying by, including both of the small denominators entirely, what happens is um, in this first fraction, the x plus h's cancel, and in the second fraction, the x's cancel. And that leaves me with, um, of course, I've got to hold on to this limit here. But what that leaves me with on the top is uh, the only thing left over in that first uh, messy fraction is just x. And then the only thing that's left over in that second messy fraction is the factor x plus h. So I do need to make sure it uh, remains in parentheses because of the subtraction sign there. And in the bottom, I still am just going to copy over this h times the x plus h times the x. So uh, we're one step away here of being able to uh, cancel my H. I need to get rid of the parentheses on the top, so I'm going to distribute the subtraction sign. And when I do that, I've got an X minus an X minus the H on top, and then the bottom we just copy over. But see, my X minus X is going to cancel, leaving me with the limit as H goes to zero. On the top, we've got negative H. On the bottom, we've got the copy of H plus a, a few other factors. Um, but now that H cancels on the top and the bottom, leaving me on the top with just the uh, kind of the placeholder negative one so that I can keep that negative sign. And on the bottom, I've got X plus H times X. And so since that H has finally canceled out, I can go ahead and compute the limit by plugging in 0 for H. And when I do that, I've got, I drop my limit no, uh, notation and I'm left with uh, negative 1 over X plus 0 times X, which would be just negative 1 over, the X plus 0 would just be X, so we'd have X times X, which is X squared. Okay. So all of that hard work was simply to get the derivative of 1 over x. Um, and like I said before, once we have shortcut rules, this part is going to be a whole lot quicker. And so we can continue to ask these uh, concept questions with tangent line information, where now the longest part is um, shortened. Okay. So, to finish the problem, remember our setup was that point slope form of the line and we already had a point. We just found that f prime of x was negative 1 over x squared, and so that we're going to use to get the slope. So the x value that we cared about was x equals uh, negative 1, and that was given. And so um, what we need here is um, f prime of negative 1, and that gives me, uh, all I have to do is take that negative 1 and plug it into my f prime that I had found, and that gives me negative 1 on top. I've got this negative 1, it's important to have parentheses there on the bottom because we're going to square it. Um, with those parentheses, it's telling me I need to take negative 1 and multiply it by itself, leaving me with a positive 1 in the bottom. So we've got negative 1 divided by positive 1, so overall my slope there is negative 1. Okay, so um, what I do to finish up this problem is utilize that setup of the point slope form, but now I'm going to plug in the right things. So I've got y minus y1. Well, y1 is the y um, is the y coordinate of the ordered pair, so that would be two equals m. M was our slope, which is negative one times x minus the x1 is the x coordinate of our ordered pair, and that would be three. Okay, and really at that point, that is an answer for an equation of a line. We could make it nicer, make it look a little bit cleaner, especially if we wanted to graph it, that would be useful. But know that that could be just the answer. It's an equation of the line. But I will show you the cleanup um, just for your information here. 
Uh, first, I'd distribute the negative 1 to get negative x plus 3. And then I'd add 2 to both sides, so I'd have y is equal to negative x um, plus 5. And that would be something that would be uh, perhaps easier to graph because you can read off the slope negative 1 there, and the y-intercept um, would be at 5. And so that gives you kind of a starting place on the graphing too. So that would be an alternative way that you could get the answer. Or, or an alternative way you could give the answer, though the boxed answer is perfectly acceptable for an equation of a tangent line or an equation of a line in general.